Where the hell are we? Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. To hell with the drinks. Let's have an orgy. This week we're entering the haunted house of horror. Maybe we'll come back later. This film was the definition of a troubled production. Many scripts, many changes, much interference. We're just reviewing it as it stands. So, a group of happening young things are at a 60s party. The epitome of swinging London itself. But they're not having the best time. I am, Bill. I just wish something would happen. Listen, hasn't anybody got any ideas? I know an old house. How bad a party is this? I don't know. All I know is it's supposed to be haunted. So they head off to an isolated old house, the site of some grisly murders. The killer is supposed to be the ghost. But what to do? Let's have a seance. What's your fancy? An orgy or a seance? They make the wrong choice. Don't people usually say something during seances? All these ghosts waiting on the other side for the usual game of charades. I'm getting the letter B and the number 12, like supernatural Sesame Street, and they say nothing. Nevertheless. What's that? As is the done thing, the group split up to search for whatever is walking about in the house of way too many doors. And... <laughs> One thing I should clarify, it's 20 minutes before they even reach the house, another 15 before they have the seance, so it's 40 minutes before the first death, which would be fine if that time was being used to set up characters and relationships that underpin the rest of the film, but it's just time wasted. I'm fed up with this. Major problem, and it's not the last one. Chris, what are we gonna do? We're gonna search this house methodically from top to bottom. That would really be the job of the police. No one's going to go running off or running to the police. We've got to figure this out for ourselves. Why? Are you suggesting one of us did it? That's exactly what he's suggesting, and for one reason. Richard, are you absolutely sure that no one could get in or out of this place without using the front door? Well, you saw for yourself. There's no way out. The speed with which they gloss over this suggests that someone knew how ridiculous it is. And who are you calling ridiculous? I think it was Frankie Avalon. This whole movie hinges on the fact that there is no way anyone could get into an old house. And if there was someone already there when they arrived, no way they could leave. Simply impossible. Oh, it's too ridiculous! One would think, but that's what they're going with. So, the killer is one of them. You must be completely mad. I'm going for the police. No, you're not. You're going to sit down and shut up. My money's on the one who keeps stopping them from contacting the police. So, what now? We get rid of the body. <gasps> it's the only thing to do. It's our only chance. They decide to cover it up altogether. Can you think of anything better? Could have used that opening 40 minutes to establish why they're all so afraid of the police. If we go to the police, I mean, last time, with that drugs thing. That'll cover it. Having hidden the corpse of their friend, they then all just go back to normal life, knowing that one of them is a killer. Yeah, I know what you mean. The only thing that's still real is that one of us did it. But who? Which one? So it's kind of like I know what you did last swinging summer. Everybody suspects everybody else, now she suspects me! We now meet the police inspector, played by Dennis Price, in a role originally intended for Boris Karloff. Well, if you put it that way, I can hardly refuse, can I? Who is actually drug squad, so he already knows the kids. We got done on that drugs bust. Nice idea. 
In the meantime... This was an ex-sugar daddy of one of the girls, and stuff like this hints at what the script was going to be before being buried in horror cliché and people doing silly things. I want to put an end to it all. I want to tell the police what happened. A month has now passed, but sure. Unless someone has a dumber idea. We could go back to the house and search it. We did. No, I mean really search it. So that concrete certainty that no one else was there, that's had you all terrified of each other for the last month. Sheila, why'd you keep running away? That's based on a pretty perfunctory search. So I guess I see the logic, but somehow that changes from let's search the place to... So we do recreate what happened the other night. Let's reenact events for reasons I cannot even begin to understand. It's going well so far. Come on. Should never have come back here. Uh, no, but I'm sure it was worth it for that thorough search. And the ending is largely unforeshadowed. I can kill them here. And makes very little sense because who was walking around during the seance? Also worth noting the homosexual subtext that's been reduced to a suggestive knife. There's just enough left in the crisscrossing relationships to see how this might have worked as cultural satire. Secondly, Dorothy's downstairs waiting for me and we're supposed to be together. If free love is just an acceptable excuse for infidelity, then what happens when the dream goes bad? Who can you trust? Don't you trust me? No. But that stuff doesn't really figure in the plot. I'm not the Lenin, you know. You don't change me when you feel like it. Maybe there was a version of this script that worked, but what's on screen is unmotivated stupidity. You look bored. You guessed right. Alongside such stultifying boredom that it's like being slowly engulfed in wet cement. Well, I can't stand this much longer. Thanks for watching. For another old dark house horror story, check out my latest book. There's a link in the description below. What horror films double as portraits of their time? Shit! What other horror films double as portraits of their time, capturing an era? Let us know in the comments below. Oh, they're right!